This is weird. As the player enters the vault and is immersed in its warped reality, they lose contact with Russell. With Russell no longer available to explain what the player was seeing, we had to communicate the important concepts of the vault through the use of visual effects, physics, sound design, and music. The most important concept was that the errant bursts of uncontrolled energy causing anti-reality events was spillover of the Vortigaunt energy being used to keep the prisoner in the vault as his influence occasionally gained the upper hand through cracks in the field. Starting from the vault crash in the prior map, we used this piece of musical sound design to represent the newly uncontrolled Vortigaunt energy being released from the vault. And this piece to accompany the reality bending bursts caused and swayed by the G-Man's increasing reach. Within the vault, we repeat these motifs to reinforce the Vortigaunt energy mechanic that the player is ultimately able to use as a weapon against the Combine, short circuit to release the prisoner, save Eli, and complete the game. Right from the earliest days of the story design, the audio team established a corresponding aesthetic plan that employed increasingly strange sound design, soundscapes, and music, culminating in a soundscape appropriate to the broken reality of the vault and Alex's encounter with the G-Man. While the vault level was being designed, it became apparent that the accompanying music would be crucial to selling the surreal nature of the vault. Most music in the vault is based on the musical palindrome you hear in the sideways room. By utilizing variations of elements in this piece and warping them with multiple types of pitch and time bending, we created an appropriately abstract sonority. While strange and dislocating, it was still consistent unto itself, as well as conceptually relevant to the multidimensional nature of the G-Man and the Vortigaunt energy imprisoning him. Half-Life Alex was set in a realistic type world with familiar rules. The G-Man's presence in the vault gave us fictional justification to experiment with different distortions of reality and embrace surrealism in these spaces. Early experiments with gravity anomalies and distorting spatial expectations were promising as the immersiveness of VR worked to exaggerate their impact. The surreal environments proved to be fertile for puzzle solving as well, but they tended to stall the pacing at the point in the game we needed it to be ramping up, so they weren't included in the final release. The most notable of these was in the mirrored apartment. Players originally had to spot and correct differences between the top and bottom apartment spaces in order to escape that area. Instead of surreal interactive puzzles, the first half of the vault became a journey through an increasingly bizarre set of spaces that were once the apartment building the G-Man was captured in. Supercharging the Russells with Vortigaunt energy helped us achieve the goal of having an unarmed player overpower the last few Combine soldiers that were guarding the G-Man. Initially, grenades and a zero-gravity hallway was how we achieved this. Separately, we'd been experimenting with using the Russells to pull and throw energy bolts from Vortigon energy nodes. This was a natural fit for the vault combat section since it evokes the concept of supercharging the gravity gun at the end of Half-Life 2 and works with the player's well-mastered Russells throwing mechanic. 
This new mechanic was introduced at a point where pacing was critical, so it had to be intuitive to pick up and quick to master. Giving the player the Vortigon energy attack not only helped to tie together that this was Vortigon energy containing the G-Man, but helped to further solidify the deep Vorticon connection to Alex. It also gave the player a chance to briefly feel like they had superpowers and be able to use that ability in a visceral, deeply physical way that's impossible in real life. As the player first views and approaches the cage, the object of their long quest, we wanted to give them a dramatic musical sense of the moment, yet have it remain unsettling and consistent with the experience of the rest of the vault. We continued to utilize variations of previously heard musical elements, but this time more clearly and slightly less abstracted. As in previous pieces, the swirling string elements are taken from the musical palindrome heard in the sideways room, but these pieces are dislocated, out of sync, and juxtaposed against each other to represent multiple clashing realities and timelines. As the player approaches the cage, a piano piece is introduced that works with all three, almost binding them together, but also standing apart, just as the G-Man binds the various threads and eras of the Half-Life series. The more surreal things got in the vault, the harder it became to design puzzles that felt appropriately abstract but still understandable. We found through testing that, at this stage in the game, players were hungry for a narrative payoff, and further puzzles just ran the risk of becoming frustrations. After some experimentation with more complex interactions, we settled on a more theatrical presentation of the moment that the player frees a G-Man. We simplified the design to a single interaction of the player gripping two handles, sending Vortigon energy back into the system, destroying the structure that was keeping the G-Man imprisoned. The ending came together rather late in the process, since all the elements of art, story, level design, interaction and music had to be in place for it to succeed. Nevertheless, we were very happy with the outcome, and the response of players has been overwhelmingly positive.